What's up everybody, it's Kevin from Palmetto Cats. It's that time again. We're going camping on my pontoon boat. We're on the way to the lake now, stay tuned. Boat is all loaded up. I got the enclosure on it. I didn't get any footage of that because it started to rain again. But there she is in her glory, ready to go camping. The water is down super low. You can see all the beach exposed. It usually comes up to right here where, where those po poles are. It's usually where the water comes up. But we got in, no trouble. Here we go. It's very shallow, 2.6 foot. And every once in a while, it'll hit 1.5. But uh, the lake, like I said, the lake is really low. Can't really see through this plastic. But we got to be very, very careful coming out here. Lake Moultrie is full of stumps and other hazards. We don't want to be uh, <laughs> broke down and camping out here just right here in the canal. Although, we could do that. We could do it. I came out here yesterday and I found a couple fish uh, deep, deep water. And uh, a lot of guys have been catching them deep around here, but all the bait is down low. So I'm out here, I'm gonna come out to this channel, find the deepest water I can, see if I can't find the bait first. And then we're gonna target some trophy catfish and hopefully we'll catch an eater so that we can do a catch and cook. But we're on the road again, guys, I'm excited. I can't wait, hopefully we can catch some fish. For bait so far, I got some uh, chicken and some gizzard shad. I'm gonna try those out. Maybe later we can catch some fresh bait. For right now, that's what we got. I cut that in half. Cut the tail off there. Still got some ice on that one. <laughs> There's a nice big one. Just gonna cut this chicken in little chunks. My hope is that this chicken will help us get our eater catfish so that we can uh, do our catch and cook. <sighs> I'm in the mood for some catfish now. I'm in this sub channel of the main channel. It's about 30, 25 to 30 feet deep. And I'm marking a bunch of fish on the bottom. I don't know what those fish are, but they're hugged real tight to the bottom. And they seem to be stacked up, kind of like catfish do. So we're gonna try that out. It could be bait fish. In any case, we're gonna try it out and see what we can find. Again, even today, if we catch a eater catfish, the small ones are okay today. <laughs> Usually we don't want them. We want the big trophy catfish. What we're doing today is uh, called trolling. We don't have much wind. So we're under trolling motor power and we're dragging our catfish baits along the bottom and we'll let that go out there. And we have one over here to do the same thing. And we'll run four of these boards uh, so that those baits get way out there and they don't get all tangled up. That's it, we'll let those go out. And what those boards will do is I'll let out a lot of line. Those are my outside boards. And then when I engage the bail on the reel, the line will tighten up and the boards will actually swim out to the right and to the left and uh, give us some room down the center so we can put another board. And then we'll run these two lines called long lines right down the middle. And those are just like your regular lines you throw out, except they'll we'll be dragging on the bottom like the other lines. So in just a second, we'll be ready to go. Okay guys, little update. We have abandoned the planter board, still no fish. We had a cat catastrophe. <laughs> with our planter boards and uh i just don't want to mess with them anymore today so we're just gonna drag baits 
without planter board straight down the uh, middle here and it's deep enough to where we can do that we don't have to worry about spooking fish so here we go fish on we got a fish on guys we got a fish on first one of the day yes he feels like he might be an eater fish too guys how exciting is that Oh man, he hit the hit the rock hard too. But yeah, it feels like a little one, which is fine. You know, we we do like catching big fish, but uh, we want that eater for tonight. We'll see if he's under ten pounds. We're definitely gonna keep him. We'll put him in the tank here, and then later on tonight we'll bleed him out and eat him. All right, here he comes. Oh yeah, it looks like a good eater fish. Oh yeah. Look at that, guys. It's a good fish. That's perfect. Perfect size to eat right there. All right, let's see if we can get him in the boat. Technically, <laughs> technically he's not ours yet. I think he's so good enough. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's an eater fish, guys. He's ours now. Look at that, that's perfect. Yeah. Look at that, he threw up a, a snail. He's been under the mud eating snails. There he is, I'm gonna get the, I gotta get the live well filled up so we can keep him in here. We don't wanna dispatch him yet. Yeah, we don't want to dispatch him yet. We want him to be nice and fresh and when it's time to eat. Ugh, got him good. There he is, guys. Oh, yeah. He's just fine in there. We're fun fishing now. We're only staying one night tonight. and we've, That's plenty of meat for me to eat. So now everything else is bonus, guys. Everything else is bonus. That came on the gizzard shad head so we're gonna throw another one out that's that red demon dragon I tell you those fish love those red demon dragons right on after we caught our eater fish uh, I didn't wasn't marking bait anymore so I moved way up in the channel to see if we can to find some more fish so I've just got the baits out and uh, locking them down and we're gonna be fishing Pow! Bam! Right in the kisser. All right, guys, we finally got another one on. We've been drifting for a long time with no bites at all, and this is that red demon dragon again, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy stock in red demon dragons. I think I'm just gonna start fishing red demon dragons from now on. Catfish hardcore demon dragons. <laughs> That's it. Now this is a small fish, but. He's probably as small as the eater when we got in the live well. Yeah, he is. He might be actually a little bit smaller. <laughs> uh, he's barely hooked too. Barely hooked. All right, he's ours. He's in the net, people. <laughs> all right. He is not an impressive fish at all. But I don't care. Yeah, the hook came out of him. Glad I netted him. I was about to lift him up. But the hook came out. Glad I didn't do that. Yes! <laughs> Perfect timing. I was about to reel up and go. Pretty fish. If there was uh, more people camping with me tonight, that'd be another good one to eat. His belly's a little swollen. He did come up kind of fast. We'll see if we can... Um, torpedo him. Maybe he'll blow it in bubbles. Terrible torpedo. There we go guys. Fish number two. Fish number two. Alright well that's enough of that. We're gonna reel these in. The sun is starting to set and it gets dark. We're here around five o'clock. It starts getting dark around five. I got about till 5 30 but um, we're gonna go find us a camping spot. Get set up bleed that fish out cook it up and get set up for uh camping on the boat oh 
Okay, we found our camping spot. Um, it's not really too private. We have a Navy campground over here, but that's about it. On this side is the dam with a bunch of rocks, but I chose this place because I had some friends that suggested that it would be safe to camp on the lake. Lake Moultrie is known for high winds and they can pop up at any time. So I'm protected by this dike over here and these trees over here. And there's a good little ditch that comes all the way in here. So maybe even the fishing will be decent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up here. I'm gonna bring the boat to a complete stop. Here we go. Take my anchor. about 20 feet deep and then we're just gonna let out a bunch of anchor rope. I'm not even gonna put tension on it. I'm just gonna let out a bunch of anchor rope. Probably most of my anchor rope I'm gonna let out and what that's gonna do is allow me to allow my chain to lay on the ground and it'll help uh, hook this anchor up because this is all sandy bottom here really no stumps or anything like that and then all my rope out just about all of it right before we get to the end I got a hundred foot anchor rope getting close to the end there and wrap this just in case it slips out of my hand <laughs> here we go ah seems like we got a good hold already guys so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to the back and throw that anchor out but we have to get to it. So let me move this stuff and then we'll throw that anchor out. All right, I'm at the back of the boat now. What I'm doing, I'm letting the trolling motor put tension back on that front anchor. Sounds like we are next to a shooting range. All right. I'm gonna throw that anchor out. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna let out probably half of this anchor line there we go I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off double anchor in a pontoon boat is a lot more difficult than just doing a John boat okay we're gonna come back up to the front and we're gonna pull the slack out of that back line and the hopes is that that back anchor will grab since we've given it a lot of a lot of rope back there a lot of slack that the chain for that one too will bury in the ground and will come to a screeching halt here in a few minutes back anchor has just tightened up guys it's just tightened up so going to go ahead and wrap this anchor around here all right looks like the front one's good let's check it out make sure everything's kosher back here oh yeah check that out anchor is nice and tight sorry about all these gunshots it must be next to a gun range or something definitely not hunting before we fillet this fish we got to clean the board off and uh, what better way to do that than to go ahead and get baits out. So we're going to chunk out some baits and start fishing. All right, bait number one, deployed. Guys, I also brought some night crawlers. I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to catch our eater fish today. So I uh, had some night crawlers. So we're going to put those out there. Look at that sucker. Goodness gracious. I'm just going to wrap him around this smaller. I'm just going to wrap him around this smaller circle hook here. I think we can fit another one on there too. What a beautiful evening this turned out to be. Look at that sunset. Amazing. You go, night crawler. Mm. 
There he goes. He's out there now. All right, guys, we have three more rods, but we're going to have to rig those up. And I want to get this fish filleted and ready to eat before the sun goes down. So we'll go ahead and get that done. All right, guys, time to fillet this fish. Y'all, I'm sitting here filleting this fish, and I just had to stop to show you this sunset. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful sunset. We almost got these fillets done. I got the actual fillet. I just got to fillet the skin off of it now, but just wanted to show you that. What we have here is a mix of fillets and chunks with all the red meat cut out that I could. As you can see, there's still some in there. Now, all I have was this uh, bait knife. And next time I actually bring a fillet knife, but we got some awesome meat. Oop, got a piece. Can't let that go to waste. We haven't washed it yet. But uh, awesome chunks and nuggets from that catfish. And uh, we got rid of all the red meat. You don't want that red meat in there. Like this, I'm gonna use because I don't, my fillet knife isn't good enough to cut that off of there without ruining a piece of meat. But that stuff is gonna be chewy and black and kind of oily. And if people say they don't like catfish, it's because they've had it with that on there. But I know better. We're gonna cook this up in a minute. First, I gotta get my light set up and everything else, and then we'll be ready to cook. So I'm gonna wash this off and get busy with that. All right, y'all, it's time to set up the cot. Uh, just like last time, I'm gonna set it up right here, caddy corner in the back of the pontoon boat. And uh, then we'll get the sleeping bags and everything on top of them and get cozy. This cot is pretty cool. It sets up pretty much like a folding chair. Got a nice, rugged bag to it set that off to the side we have these clamps on the side that release the tension and it's pretty simple it just folds right out I'm trying to remember where the head parts at I think this is the head section down here yep let that fold out I gotta push on a little bit and flatten out. There we go, simple as that. Pretty easy to set up. It's pretty tight in here, but it does pretty good. I like it. Guys, in this box, it looks huge to be out here, but since I was fishing and never know what the weather's gonna be like, this has just got my sleeping bag and an extra blanket and my pillow in it. And I'm a big boy, so it's a big boy sleeping bag. After last year, I definitely wanted a colder rated bag for this time. So here we go. This bag is a Teton. The last one was a Coleman bag. But this one is uh, definitely rated for colder weather. And that's what I wanted. And it's an oversized bag for big people like me. I just have to get this bag loosened up. Should dump right out. There we go. Nice. Very thick, very heavy. Definitely not something you would want to backpack with. I'll have to look up. Well, yeah, it's a negative 25 degree bag. There's it right there. Negative 25 degree bag. So we will be super warm and cozy in this bag tonight. Assuming it doesn't drop down below zero, which I doubt it will. <laughs> Next up, we have our cool pillow. This thing is awesome, guys. This pillow is really cool. Um, it's called a climate pillow and I had it last year too. I got another one for Anna. Actually, I think I brought the, brand, brought the brand new one with me. But it's a down pillow inside this 
uh, water resistant case and it keeps your pillow nice and clean but you don't sleep on this this is the cool part you unfold this flap here you have all this fabric right and all you do is grab turn it upside down and grab this uh, orange part here and the pillow goes down into the fabric which is more comfortable and you roll that up just like that and then there's a little uh, pouch here that you fold over that that orange right there and you got a nice down pillow and it's pretty big for a camping pillow so I'm excited to use that again and throw that all right so when I'm not using these uh, bins here, I just stack them one on top of each other and I put the one with all the sleeping bags and stuff in the bottom so that I can have access to uh, all my goodies on the top. Man, it's looking pretty out here, guys. Check that out. Check that out. No hitch yet. But you know, this, this is the time the fish start coming. But we have some fish to eat. So I'm going to get set up to cook and we'll start doing that. I forgot to mention my two sources of light. I have my Conpex light out here lighting up the rods. And we'll just have that on while we're fishing, while we're up. When we go to bed, we'll turn that off. But then the second one are these awesome light bulbs. And I'll show you why they're awesome. They have come with a little remote here. And I can just turn them off. So if I'm sitting in the cot or sitting on the couch or whatever, or I'm out here and I need to come in, just keep this remote on me and uh, turn it on with the uh, remote, just like that. One remote works for both these lights. Come with a carabiner and I just hook them from the top here and I have light coming down on top of me. Perfect for cooking. Okay guys, we got this meat in a bowl here. I'm gonna clean it off a little bit. It's pretty clean. But since it's been on that bait board, I figured I'd give it a little douse in some fresh water. This is not lake water for my wife who's watching. Isn't that meat pretty? Let's squeeze that meat and the water out as good as I can. I've got a good amount of paper towels here. What I'm gonna do is lay these nuggets and fillets here on the paper towel and let them dry out a little bit. I don't want all that water in the pan so I'm going to let the fillets and the nuggies dry out. Soak up some of that moisture in there. So that when I use my butter and all my seasonals, that it's not wasted. And it doesn't just go in the bottom of the pan with the water. Mmm, this is going to be so delicious. Can you taste it already? Can you taste it? Squeeze a little bit of that out. Mmm, 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 good. Can't waste any of it. Gotta get all that out. Even the little tiny nuggy. All right, we're gonna let that soak up and I'm gonna get all our ingredients out and we'll start cooking. Once our catfish dry out, guys, I got this cool new knife set from GSI Outdoors. My beautiful wife gave it to me. It comes with three awesome knives. Uh, a little thing right here for some oil or whatever you wanna put in it. A washcloth and a cutting board. And we're going to use this cutting board to kind of lay out all of our ingredients after they've been cooked. So we'll kind of slide this over this way. That'll be on there in a minute. But this cutting board opens up. Oops. Just like that. Isn't that neat? I've had nothing but problems with this Coleman stove ever since I got it. This will be the last time I use it, but... The igniter doesn't work on it anymore, apparently. And uh, I don't know where my lighter is. It's in the boat somewhere, but I can't find it. So we're going to uh, jerry start this with my jet boil igniter and hopefully it don't blow off my face. There we go. Oh man. All right, let's get this fish up popping here. Get that pan on there. Get that thing good and hot. Now we're not going to blacken fish. We're not going to blacken it. We are going to 
just saute it. I don't like blackened stuff. So we're just going to saute our fish and we're gonna put it in a taco. Now for tacos, we're just gonna use these little uh, zero carb tortilla shells I found at Walmart. And I'll show you those in a minute. We're gonna put some spinach in it. And we're also going to put, uh, we're also gonna put some Parmesan cheese on it. So that's gonna be good. Uh oh, had a fish hit. Not sure if he's on there or not. Oh, he let go. Oh, all right, we're getting fish activity. We gotta hurry up and cook, guys. All right, all right. The butter is starting to season or uh, sizzle there, and that got me all worked up. We're gonna lay these fillets in here. We're making catfish tacos, low carb tacos. Trying to get in shape here. And uh, even though I'm out having fun, I still have the option to eat healthy. Turn down the gas on that a little bit. Again, we don't want to blacken our fish. We just want to uh, saute it. Mmm. And what we have is these zero carb tacos by Mission. These little cute little dollar size tacos. And we're going to put some nice fresh spinach in there. Uh, not cooking it. And then we have some Parmesan cheese that we're going to finish off the fish with. And before we get too far, i got to put me some two-step on there. I'm going to put that on a cracker, dude. That's money. <laughs> oh yeah. I like my food well seasoned guys. And that right there is well seasoned. Go ahead and open this up. I'm actually gonna put the parmesan on there um, before the fish comes off of the heat so that way it melts a little bit. My problem is I got to fit these other fillets in there. There we go. Let's put them in around the side. The pan's a little bit too small for all that, but it'll be alright. Uh oh, not everything's covered. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. This catfish is getting right. Mm. Looking good. See why I dabbed it out? Because it's still got a lot of them juices in there. to look good now we got the other side seasoned up pretty good probably turn up the heat a little bit and let a lot of that juice boil out a lot of that water get out of the pan now the fish will suck some of that back up once i turn off the fire it's starting to get it ain't fall apart yet so it ain't done but it's starting to get white and flaky that's how you know it's about to be right I'm going to go ahead and flip it one more time. Yeah, that's starting to fall apart there. Mm. See that uh, the water's starting to boil out of there. And all that's left is the seasoning. And just a little bit of juice. Maybe that butter. Mm. We hot. Mm, mm, mm. Alright, right about now I'm going to start throwing this Parmesan on there. That Parmesan will cook on there like a crust. Eventually it'll get ooey and gooey and all good. The windows are starting to fog up. Look at that. 
can turn the heat down a little bit. Mmm, yeah, see how it's getting gooey in there? That's what we want. Scrape up all that season on. On the fillets. It's okay if it falls apart. Remember, it's going in a taco. I actually don't mind mine falling apart because I can scoop it into the taco. That's a lot of meat for one person, but we're going to make it happen, dude. <laughs> you need to stop talking like that, dude, or he's going to sue me. Mm, let's taste. Mmm. Mmm. Could even use a little more seasoning. Getting crusty on the bottom. I think we about ready to go, guys. Come try to escape. So I'm gonna do. So the spinach ain't cold on there. I want it to stay kind of crispy. I'm just gonna put it on the top. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna come over here to our prep station, or our ending station, I guess you could say. Let's start off with two. Got two right there. I'm gonna grab that spinach and everything. Good clump right there. There we go, right there on the taco. Might have got a little too much for that one. We'll put a little bit of that over there. Mm, 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 mm. Check that out. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's go to the Lord for this meal. Lord, thank you for this meal. Thank you for keeping us safe today, and thank you for this fish. Lord, we sacrifice it so we can eat it. We just thank you for all your resources. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's try it. Wow. That's better than I thought it would be. <laughs> Ooh, man. That, that spinach is real crunchy. And you can taste the Parmesan cheese and that season. They go to they go together well. Mmm. Yes, sir. Fresh catfish right out the lake merely hours ago. And it's right here on my taco. Thank you, Lord. Mm. No, nothing going on here. Just uh, enjoying a fresh fish taco out on the deck of my boat while I'm fishing for other fish in the middle of the lake. No big deal. <laughs> yes, sir. Mmm. I got a few more things I got to do. I got to, you know, clean up after myself, clean up after this meal and everything. I got a few more rods I want to rig. I want to change out of these boots. I want to get out of these boots into my tennis shoes. And I get my heater set up. I'm not cold at all right now. It's really not bad. You can see the uh, air coming out of my mouth, but it's still, it's really not bad out here, so... That'll be the last thing I do. But we're going to get everything else set up. And man, I'll be back with you. After I eat, of course. <laughs> now on to my favorite accessory <laughs> of the night. Is this little five pound propane canister that I got for Christmas. Comes with a little case there. It's by Ignic. Right there. I did a short about this on my YouTube channel. And basically it keeps you from bringing those little green canisters uh, this thing will fit up to five of those green canisters in it and it comes with a hose that will power any device or any appliance that you use those green canisters for so uh, you can save the environment and save money because those things are expensive and this thing cost me 475 to fill at the uh, hardware store 
So any place you can fill the big bottles, like the 20 pounders for your grills or anything, they'll fill these too. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited about it. I'm about to hook it up right now just so that we have it when we do need it. Hook it right on there, make sure it's good and tight. There we go. Let's test it out though. Open the bottle there. Let's see. Pilot light. Gonna hold a little longer. Gonna hold it a little longer. <laughs> It's a long hose, gotta get that gas through it. Okay. Whoosh. Here we go, guys. There you can see it heating up. Ooh, that's warm too. I don't know how long it lasts. We'll do a test of it another day. But I wanna make sure that it lasts for tonight. Like I said, we don't need it right now, so I'm gonna turn it off. But uh, we'll get to it later. We're checking these baits. Uh, now that we've changed our shoes, got our propane ready, belly's full. And uh, it was strange, all the baits are there, even the one I got to hit. But this, uh, the night crawlers were gone. So I don't know, something, something got to them secretively or we didn't see the hit or something. So i put those back on there. chunk those back out we're gonna get these other rods rigged up now i got another uh light tackle rod here with a small circle hook on it since that night crawler got hit i'm gonna put another one on here but this one has a demon dragon float so it'll keep it up off the bottom not i don't know if that'll make any difference for whatever took the uh bait but it, it's gonna be a different presentation nonetheless. So I'm just lacing on this night crawler here. I'm gonna wrap it around. You don't want to cooperate, I wouldn't either. There we go. This is just a uh that other rod is a whisker seeker catfish and carp edition with the PC Fun Carbon X. I think it's a 3,000 or 4,000 size reel. And this is just a Walmart ugly stick uh, bass fishing rod. And I've got 20 pound braid on both of these. So we're gonna see if we can't get lucky here. And wouldn't it be awesome if we caught a giant catfish on one of these smaller rods? <laughs> Yeah, just a drag. Too loose. Too tight. Just right. Fun to batten down the hatches here. It's getting a little chilly. What I'll do is I'll just leave one one side unzipped. So that when I have to go get a fish, I can get out real quick. All right, guys, it's getting late. I think I'm gonna cozy on up in my sleeping bag and hit the sack. See you in the morning. Well, the roosters are crowing, the sun is coming up, the boats are starting to come out. So I guess I'd better get up and get started packing up the worst part about camping. And uh, maybe have a little breakfast. We might do a little fishing too, I don't know, it just depends. We're going to get started. I am impressed this buddy heater stayed on all night. I haven't changed the tank. Um, now I have had it on medium the whole time. 
but didn't go out stayed nice toasty and warm in here all night long that's a I really recommend that bottle now I will like I said we'll do a test on another video to see how long that bottle lasts maybe I'll go fill it up today and we'll do that test this weekend uh, so we can see how long it'll last on high since it only cost me four dollars to fill it up <laughs> All right, for breakfast, we're gonna keep it simple. I did bring a pack of thick cut bacon. Uh, like last time I was hoping to fry that up, but uh, I'm still pretty full from the dinner last night. That camp, them catfish tacos still in my belly. So I'm gonna keep it simple and just do my strawberry granola cereal. It's a freeze dried granola cereal. It's got strawberries in it. And uh, all you do is add cold, some cold water to it. I think it's like eight ounces of water. <clears throat> yeah, you add eight ounces of water and it makes delicious cereal. Gotta remember to take the uh, <laughs> flavor saver out. This is 20 fluid ounces, so we need a little less than half of this to make this work. There we go. And these freeze dried packages are so easy to make. Basically you pour your water in and stir it up so that the water gets down to everything. This has obviously got powdered milk in it. So you're supposed to let that sit for five minutes. You know, this is a, a great way to spend time outdoors. It's better spent with other people. I wish my wife could be with me, but uh, you know, if you got a boat in a tent or a enclosure or even a tarp uh, maybe not the winter time with the tarp but you know you can get out here and do this and everybody can do it um, the summertime is a little warmer it's a little tougher to do it you can still do it and maybe I need to get out in the summer and try it myself all right let's give this thing a go here mm. very delicious i know it's got artificial sweeteners and everything in it but man it's so good it's quick and easy and for the cleanup you just throw this pouch away that's it very calm and beautiful out here this morning But y'all, I think I'm going to call it. We're going to get on back over. We got to drive across the entire lake to get back to the boat ramp. So we're going to go ahead and take that trip now so I don't get a ticket on my truck. But y'all, I love doing this thing. Uh, even though it was harder this time, you know, I'm going to work hard to make sure that I can do this kind of content more often. So if you like it, hit the thumbs up, share it out, subscribe. Till next time, y'all. Happy fishing.